All right, to my right is Anne, and she just told me she is going to really enjoy her talk here. Um, Anne Kliebisch from a Leadership uh, three Times 3 is going to talk about multiple ways of making decisions. Eeny, meeny, miny, moo, making um, sensible, conscious decisions. All right, great, thank you. I'm going to say two words about myself before I start. I work at Leadership uh, Times Three, uh, and we're going to we're dealing with how do we want to. Uh, make our world and how can we create events like with these things like um, all this bad bullshit that everybody kind of deals with that you kind of but kind of personally if we talk one on one these kind of things that we didn't want like climate change like making decisions is kind of the main main aspects and trigger that's uh, important in that regard. And how to scale this to from, from a team level, organizational level, and that's why I work on the basic income right now. And that's, we kind of uh, got rid of all sorts of hierarchies. We used to have very flat hierarchies, and now we don't have none. And now all of a sudden we had all these questions, who's making decisions on what? How are we dealing with one another? How are we creating something together at like still getting where we want to get without kind of having these super lengthy discussions and getting caught up at that. And uh, we've been doing that for two years now. And um, some of these paths of decisions making, um, like uh, when it comes to basic income that we're trying out, I'm going to show you now and present to you now. Uh, I don't really want to philosophically talk about so much about decision making. I'm doing that in the beginning a little bit. And then I really want to talk about practical examples that you can take and try out in your own context. It doesn't matter where I am. I think one of the main things I usually hear, uh, it's like it's kind of taking forever again. It's obviously only the loudest one we heard. Is there any sort of room next to all those egos, like these tasks that we actually want to accomplish? And everything has everything been said before me, but not from me. We're kind of drifting off topic again. How did we get here? We were actually going to talk about this. Are you actually open to understanding one another instead of just fighting? How, what, which one of you actually knows about five or six of these sentences that we have up on this slide? Please raise your hand. And please leave your hands open. Who knows about four of these six sentences? All right, I can see that's about two thirds, if not even more, maybe three quarters of the whole group. Exactly, and that is kind of what I experience all the time and experience all the time. And then you kind of have to have more intelligent paths of making decisions together. This is just kind of not very fulfilling. And what we kind of know is that we have everything is being decided by everyone together on, based on consensus and based on everybody kind of getting on the same bad page. Or the other direction is one decides and that's kind of the very higher like the hierarchy and so we have the boss and the boss is the one that making is making decision <coughs> and kind of in between there we have like this kind of big kind of room that nobody's actually making use of and the decisions that I want to present you and what they're based on is amongst all the different kinds of strength that we all have how can we use the diversity that we have and bring to the table. I was uh, part of a dance performance today. And what I found really interesting was that in the beginning, they were dancing in a classical form in the same kind of movement. At some point, kind of let go of that, just kind of like we know from hierarchies, where we just kind of have this clear direction that everybody's kind of going towards because we know that if it is uh, something that uh, society tells you to do, we know this from schools, from other companies. But the moment that we step aside and step out and have 
singular strength that we kind of look at, we can kind of decide to then kind of join in on like a, a, a parallel movement. Like it's, it's maybe a bit complex. I was so inspired from this dancing today. I believe it's just as much bullshit to say that we don't want any kind of hierarchy so that we're doing the exact opposite of that. And we're just kind of trying to make everyone and unify everyone uh, and make have everybody involved in making these decisions. I think what I really care about is how can we uh, have wisdom instead of ego? So how can we have and recognize people where they have competency and their area of expertise and let them ha make those decisions with regards to that. I'm super happy, for example, that I don't have to deal with the technicalities today, the technicians today. I can just talk to the technical boys, uh, and they know what they do, and they don't know what they need, and I don't need to uh, add my two cents to that. All right, and I'm, I'm kind of done with a pre-introduction here soon. Don't worry. Another thing that I kind of have as a fundamental understanding, it doesn't. Ma it's not about. Um, serious, like they don't have to last for 150 years. They're something that's dynamic, something kind of almost playful that we kind of revisit and adapt and that we can change constantly, basically. So what I want to talk about today is this kind of scale. We can delegate decisions, we can make them and come to them as a group. But what we kind of have is a question that we have to ask ourselves, how can we switch the mode depending on the situation and the decisions that need to be made or the person that needs to make the decision? And that's the thing that I think uh, a lot of the, the IQ about this kind of decision making is based upon this. A lot of times when we are dealing with decisions and democratic decisions, we have this idea, this notion that the decision that's best where most people agree that that is the best decision. But if you look at those are in accordance and they, they, they approve, they don't matter, uh, they don't care about this and they are against it. And these kind of, if you compare those two, you can see there's a complete difference. They have, between the two, they have the same agreement upon this and approval, but they have, with the second one, there's more people who disapprove of this than the ones that are for this. And if we look at the fourth and the third one, um, you can see like the top one is decision number three, or like option number three has more approval. If you look at it democratically, of course we want to do approval, like the third option. But if you look at the fourth option, there's so much more people that are against this, so we lose a lot more people if we go for option number four. So what I think, what I'm also really curious and interested in, and a lot of times is a lot more, makes a lot more sense, don't look for a consensus, consensus but, and also not democratically, and not what's uh, the most approved, but which one is kind of the one that has the least amount of vetoes because the acceptancy uh, is a lot bigger because the people that are kind of in the middle, like they don't really care about or they don't care, like they, they don't know about it, plus the people that approve. How do you say this? Uh, that kind of have like a, an important uh, big opinion. When I say Oh, maybe I should have done this slide a bit later. Okay, that just doesn't matter. We're just going to go ahead. So if I now decide in this kind of example of making decisions on your own, coming to or making them as a group, there's a game where I can where I can that I can play to like understand how I want to do it. It's called delegation poker. Uh, with uh, the, the company that I work for, Leadership Times Three, uh, we gave it over to, we organized this festival and we gave it over to three of these people who are kind of, that's their main job is to organize this festival. And then the former 
team, we kind of were super clear which tasks we're giving to them and we're going to let them decide fully and which ones we don't. And a lot of times we took these cards and put them out on the table, like, amongst them. so who's going to decide of the, about the finances of this year's festival? And then all five people pulled the same, uh, like one of the cards. So either we're making the decisions and are only telling the people. The second one, we're making the decisions ourselves and explain the other so that they can ask questions back. We consult with them as a third option. So we kind of ask their opinion and then decide on our own. We uh, make uh, the decision all together. We consult. So the new core team is making the decisions, but we're consulting and giving our input. We're giving them the decision so they can completely on their own decide how much a ticket would cost, and we just kind of want the information in the end. Or we let them make a decision, we delegate it, and we are not involved at all. And what really proved with us was a lot of times we were not really in agreement with one another. Smaller things usually, a lot of times between three and five. And it was super interesting to really discuss these questions of like, for example, who is about finances, who can invite externals, who does the public uh, outreach communication, all of these questions, like look at them singularly and which mode do we want to uh, respond to and make this decision. And afterwards kind of uh, look at which method we're going to use in order to do and make our decisions. All right, who was here knows the first making decisions, holacracy and has it kind of similar. There's one person that is um, that where the task is being delegated to. It doesn't matter what decision there is. If we can't agree, we're going to select one person, and that person is going to decide. And then you can look at who and how would you uh, pick that person, like the largest competence, learning motivate or like motivation or somebody who has the most tension when it comes to these decisions. Some people are like super passionate about a certain subject or subject matter and then they are obviously the ones that, that could and would want to decide that. For example, uh, the SEC, I don't know if who knows this like uh, living community close to Berlin, this, they have this kind of aspect of, of, of commercial, like almost like economic aspects, and then they have the one where they have like, like this personal life. And they, they, they use this, this kind of um, way of, of looking at things. And they, they use holacracy uh, as their basic uh, system. And they have a whole system that's built around holacracy, but that's their, their principle of making decisions. The second thing is like delegating to group is also a second thing. I have, an, in, in one company I, f I got to know from the US, it's called, they were called Morningstar. Some of you who read Lalu maybe know this company. And they said that there are about 600 people. And they said, well, our processes of finances, like who gets what salary um, is solved by this. So they delegated to a group. There's a group of people that are being elected and that can be elected and I send them a letter of what I've done uh, and then I state what kind of salary I should get based on this and then they approve or disapprove my suggestion of what kind of salary I should be getting. Because they say obviously they don't really want to deal with that on the scale of 600 people but we trust 10 people that, they, that we've elected that they make good decisions that are good for everyone. And they, they kind of try to get them from all sorts of backgrounds from within the, the company so that they can have like a good, so that if you, for example, always think of yourself too low on a salary scale, then I can maybe tell you, hey, you should actually ask for 10% more because you did quite a good job. Another option for those of us that say that one does one person decides, I kind of like it, but I want that us as a team have the option to 
re-evaluate uh, the decision that was made, kind of. So that one option possibility there is to have an integration of perspectives in delegated decisions. So you kind of have this process of, of consulting so that in the end I could make the decision, like uh, how much I would like to have uh, the ticket price for Fusion in the upcoming year, but I still have to ask three people. I have to ask one person that's affected by by that, so maybe one of you guys out there. Someone that has more experiences like that, so probably talk to somebody who was already involved in organizing it last year. And somebody who has a better overview or more experience. So that it, it's it, given that I don't do anything bullshit like getting, like asking for 10 euros, for example, and we can't do the whole festival any longer because I didn't know any better, or I take 500 or 1,500, and then we don't really have the crown anymore that we have, and the principle of wanting to invite everyone is not a given anymore. All right, so like exactly, Holacracy also has that kind of principle and by kind of making a consulting process in the end, I decide myself, but I would usually start with making a suggestion. I would be like, hey, next year's ticket should cost 70 euros. Then you can ask questions of understanding or things that you don't understand. Okay, all right, did you, like, is that the ticket price for everyone? Or is this, are there like exceptions who people earn a lot of money or people who don't earn anything at all? And I can answer and respond. Or I can say, mm, I don't know, we haven't specified that yet. Um, and then the whole team, one after another, can uh, give a reaction of like, yeah, I love that, that's a great ticket price, or like, oh no, sorry, but like, what? Doesn't make sense, did you not think about any of this? I would do it differently. And then I have the option to adapt my suggestion. I can say, okay, Masha uh, said something that was super great, she organized the fusion last year, I completely, maybe uh, 50 euros would be better. And then I adapt my suggestion. And then we do another group where we ask for vetoes. So is there people who give veto based upon a right thing? And like if that my decision would uh, throw us back and, and uh, in the process of work that we've done so far. And the basic question for a veto is, is it, is it good enough for now? And is it safe enough to try? So these are kind of the two fundamental questions that you should ask yourself in order for why you uh, have a valid veto. So these kind of principles, it's, like, it's kind of like a gamified game process of making decisions because the decisions are constantly re-evaluated based upon new, uh, new uh, things that we found out. So if you uh, think back to the slide with uh, the different options with all the vetoes, and there's this one method that only deals with these kind of vetoes. So uh, it looks as we kind of want to build as much of a consensus and get as many people on our side. And the green and the, the gray ones, they're, they are on board. But the ones that maybe need special attention or have like this kind of personal tension, we want to select those especially. And so we have a question of asking them, the people who vetoed and give them different options of like, hey, I can, I can, I can agree completely, that's one. And then two is I have sort of like minor concerns, but it's all right, I don't really need to be hard. Three is I, I have actual concerns, I want to be, I want to be heard on this. For if I uh, am not heard on the subject matter, then I cannot carry this decision with you guys. Or five, I veto, I completely block this decision, I need to leave this group, I need to leave this task if we make this decision and call. And I heard once from someone the rule of thumb, this veto you kind of only give two or three times in your life. Most people can, kind of most decisions you can kind of carry and their kind of opinions. So this kind of, and what you kind of try is the, the get the people who vote say three or four or the fists and look at them and uh, look at what kind of intelligence is behind those vetoes and then really kind of 
um, take their co to their concerns until you have resolved all of their concerns. Exactly, and the other thing that I kind of took said already is, are there um, are there are there objections that are kind of valid and what we already heard also is that if you were part of the sociocracy workshop, it's not about decisions or wishes. It's like what I would like to have the website in red or in green. It's kind of not that important, but that we can kind of get from fee from getting feedback. I think what m is is this question of like is it proved or is it invalid? So is like is my is my concern based on, on on something that's a valid fact? I think the funniest thing is ex example is like from a company in northern northern Germany, and they they build hangars, and the boss of that company um, introduced self organization and left the company completely because he had a burnout and he just couldn't uh, make any more decisions. That everything had to be approved by him and every decision made by him, and he then introduced a few rules such as how people should be talking to one another, how they should give feedback to one another. They um, have this process of delegation as well. And the coolest thing I found with him was that there was decisions that in the long term just can't be done. They are very different in every organization. Like basic income is this kind of question that's like, how are we dealing with finances? Like do we just do finance numbers that everybody sees? Uh, that like there's like this this budget of like, further education or a finance team just says no that's that's stupid because you have to interpret those numbers and we don't really we kind of want to have a common understanding of this and this this subject is is something that like uh, from with the beginning of time that was kind of part of it and then we have different suggestions and none of them really is like oh yeah let's do it that way and and then it's it's yeah so those kind of subjects they also have and he said that every half year. They meet as a whole group, and they stand in the courtyard. And all these big questions that we can't make decisions upon, for those, we're taking 15 minutes as a group and then decide them as a group. Because when, if we continuously discuss and discuss and discuss, these are indicators that we're looking for opinions and not actual facts. And maybe it also doesn't really matter what decisions we're making. We just kind of need to try one out. And it doesn't matter how many big subjects we have. The whole group just takes 15 minutes, and one after another, those are being decided. And then half a year later, they can reevaluate that decision and make a new one if they want to. And this is kind of what I, what I s mean when I, when I say playful, gamified uh, process method. So we kind of find new information and then adapt and make other decisions. And it's all about taking one step after another. If you cannot make any decision at all, there's there's all sorts of, like there's, for example, this website. There's an app, it's an application. I can enter what's my first choice and my second, and that one will decide for you. I can always uh, guide you there if, if you don't know how to decide at all. I can just uh, flip a coin. Yeah, and that was that was kind of it. Okay, um, then we have a lot of time for questions and answers, and uh, I armed myself with a microphone, and you just notify me, and then I'll come through to you. So, hands up. Ah. Just run here. Okay. Hello. Thank you for the great talk. I have... Um, Really great uh, ideas. How would you react to have to? How would you, if you only had to decide between five things and you can have only one choice? It's not this playful that you could change uh, within half a year or so. And so, if 
if there's one choice and uh, you so for example if you um, choose between universities to study at or uh, where to work at and you choose for one then they don't have to you change after half after six months so because you know something I, w I would like the other one better but you would have to wait um, and change um, how how would you in a company it's different but uh, how would you deal with that from your f gaming f flexible perspective I don't really know if it is from our perspective, but from my perspective, I would try to gather as much information as possible, and then probably just not also rational. I'd like work there for a couple of days and kind of beyond these like factors like how what people, how many vacation days. Do I get a feeling? Do I feel comfortable? That's super important for me. Or like my sister, she's super crazy. She just kind of writes random people on Facebook. She's not that as, like, I'm not as digital, but that's that's how she decided which university to go to, for example. Okay. Um, uh, with 15 minute decisions, will the, is it decided with a majority? Is there no veto right, or do you have to a little disagree on that? No? No. Um, they they take 15 minutes <coughs> and, and they take as many subjects for them and they have three minutes if they have five decisions they have three minutes per decision and then it's kind of like this delegated process where you uh, make a suggestion there's quite time for Q&A and reactions so there's no real veto process in that time anymore in that time that you have the suggestion is being adapted usually yeah I have a general question about the veto right. How? What's your position on can a veto right uh, just uh, paralyze a group, and can it lead to, in some cases, lead to a very anti-democratic uh, situation where uh, one person blocks the decision-making process? Um, well, for me, it really depends what decision you want to make. Because I think there's decisions where it really matters that there is a consensus and everybody's involved in deciding this. I think things that you cannot reverse, you can't really test out if you want to fire someone and then you reverse that and take them back and get them back. I don't think that's exactly the same example, but I, th I realize there's examples and situations where I think it's super important that we uh, have this right for veto and everybody has to be for something. Um, um, otherwise, if you work with Holacracy, for example, they have very clear defined, clearly defined what's a veto, and I've never experienced, I've, I've been working for this with this for five years, and I've never experienced a veto that was completely 100% valid. And if you don't work based on holacracy beforehand, you can kind of define what does veto mean for us. And based upon what measurements you uh, think a veto is justified. Front. Okay, let's start with the lady. There's also discussions within the group that have uh, been escalated uh, to a certain point and then there has to happen a veto, and then there is a veto. Uh, I just ask myself uh, in groups. It's so easy, but uh, you th the way you say it, but it starts from a group that should be, uh, is uh, emo emotionally neutral, and where there's not like waves, uh, high waves of uh, emotions, but uh, how do you deal with, uh, uh, with a situation where it would be best to not see each other for a year and then decide again? Well, I mean, I think it's a question of when you're implementing a process of decision. If you're doing that at the point where there's already conflict or if you're doing it at a point where people are working well together, I think res conflict resolution is something different than making a decision. Holacracy, for example, 
it's you go round in this group of, uh, and then you do questions and back questions and, and questions for understanding things and then ad adaptation of the suggestion. So that not only the loudest person is the one that's always hard, but every perspective can be integrated. And then you can't kind of automatically move away from the subject and question and, or in this like small side discussion and get involved in that because you only have that much time to, and, and time that you're allowed to talk with, uh, Basic income, for example, uh, they they make this. They have this thing of like, oh, it's good not to fight. And and I went in, and I was like, this is very clear. This is not a question that is with regards to understanding the subject. Now we did this twice already. And the first time, everybody was just kind of like, oof, I don't know. And the second time, it went really well because within an hour, we managed to cover five to six big, big questions and subject when they kind of used to take three days. Does this answer your question already? Let's continue. I've got a question about the usage of Holocaust government's method. Uh, assuming that we're in a decision uh, situation that we have to take a decision and it didn't work, and now people vote for someone who elects someone who should decide this for them, and I say I elect Tim uh, or propose Tim, and then there's like five people proposed. How does it? How does it work? How, how, how do people set themselves up? Uh, well, Lacrosse has a role for that, and the role decides which role is to be filled with whom. So there's one person that decides uh, with um, the, the company basic income. Uh, we, we select and we nominate, and um, then we listen to why we nominated who, and it's a bit different. Holacracy would say, there's one person, and that's it. Let's continue there. We've uh, talked a lot about the people who <coughs> um, run the decisions. Uh, so I'm having a decision <coughs> the system with Holacracy, and I'm, I'm affected by its decision, and don't want to carry the support the decision. Should I give you an example? I work for uh, city administration and I work at a CF theater and the I propose a, um, a job and um, uh, the politics decide decides about it. I have the, uh, the I can make the proposal but and the um, politics decides if I can stay or go and I don't like this. I think the problem we also have with um, with the general basic income as a, an association, um, we have this, and internally there's this, it's not, these legal implications are not affected at all. So we're trying to have this one person that's carrying all the legal uh, kind of responsibilities, but internally we wanna f make decisions freely and experiment around. But that person at the same time also has the, the responsibilities to be this point of friction because they are the ones who are legally um, in charge and 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 potentially um, can be um, if something goes wrong. Like the, the whole, in holacracy, there's nothing that holacracy doesn't deal with that. And they say that the constitution of things, uh, the the boss gives over the responsibilities to the whole team, and. So if you work with the politicians, I think there's other questions at play beyond how do we make decisions. I think, I don't know, I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to generally respond to that and how to react to that. But I don't know if this really helps you a lot in the predicament that you're in. Who... Can you manage at my total income, my basic income, uh, to make these decisions together, uh, except for the 15-minute rounds, or do you need, or do you need 15-minute rounds from time to time, and do they lead to a sustainable acting? Because the because those are the most discussed topics. And they have to then work uh, done. 
Mm, at my basic income, we don't really do the 15-minute things. We work with a mixture of one person makes decision or one role makes the decision, as we call it, and um, these kind of consulting moments uh, that I get from certain people where I wish for it. We, we had more problems w with the thing that people didn't want to make decisions on their own. And that just always led to lengthy discussions as if one person makes a suggestion. And in other organizations, I know very few people that experiment so much as we do, except for those are also, like if it's a social context kind of. And my impression is that a lot of times there's one person that designs and then picks singular people that then consult on the, the, the subject. Does, does not really answer your question, does it? You said, uh, you said that there's a problem, that there's not uh, no, no, so that, much that too discussion much together? No, no, that too much is being decided together. I think most organizations that I know, especially social ones, this this kind of fear of making your own decision and making decision for a group. No, 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 but I, what I mean the other way around is like if, if it's a group that's uh, not really from that social context, is it the other way around? Um, I was just involved with a company with 300 people and they have certain subjects that are just decided by management and nobody else can touch it, like salary is classically one of those. And we really try to introduce this step-by-step -step, uh, softening up uh, decision-making processes. I don't think that one thing is cor the correct way of going. Like it's, this is, is, is the smart thing isn't one extreme or the other. I think it's more about creating a flexible, dynamic process. I kind of have a question of uh, chicken and egg. Um, in the beginning, we have to kind of ask ourselves how are we going to make decisions? And a lot of times, uh, I kind of face the fact that that already failed, and that's kind of a major thing if we want everyone to, to kind of carry decisions. And the, the mass of people needs to be rather homogenous and has the same base of knowledge in order to make this decision. Yeah, I, I had that question when I started at, at my basic income. Uh, when I started there, and they, they started abandoning hierarchies, and then they kind of went like, oh, what are we going to do now? And I honestly, for half a year, was just working on feedback. Like, how do I know what I can say? How can I express that? How can I express it clearly so that people understand me and, and so that I can like, say it empathetically. And then I, I kind of have this like three days of holacracy workshop and I introduced methods and, and quite structured uh, decision making. And then we decided how we're gonna make decisions. Because when I realized that like I don't really trust myself with giving feedback and I don't trust you that you can take that feedback and then you have to like make these decisions, you don't really actually dare to make the decisions and, these, and, and change these ways of going. Yeah. If there's uh, we doubt, we, we still have time. Okay. There's the ones. Um, we have a team where it's pretty chaotic, and uh, uh, the question before. Uh, led me to ask, do we need a coaching for the people themselves? Do we have to uh, stop making decisions and then uh, go to that way, uh, feel the way down the line? Um, how do we get to these decisions? How do we get involved in these decisions? Do we need a person from outside uh, who strengthens us? And how do we make decisions before we uh, agree on things? I think that's very difficult to say in general because I don't know you guys. But if you've tried out a few things and you didn't kind of found common grounds, 
I think you can, it's, sometimes it helps to introduce somebody who's an outsider because that person is potentially a bit more clear and reflective in reflecting these things that you internally are, are having difficulties at, at voicing. question I would run walk through the okay Brian there yeah, so far okay I would be interested in you talked a lot about rationality how do you deal with emotionality at uh, my association, the, my basic income, we, we looked at uh, the sense of meetings and separate the, the meetings where we just talk about how do we work together, uh, things that we need to make decisions upon on a daily basis. Then there's meetings where we just kind of uh, talk about what's our framework, what kind of roles do we have, what processes of decision making do we have, what other um, kind of negotiations do we have. And then we have meetings where we just talk about the interpersonal, how are you, where do you want to go, where do you maybe want to work after, you've done, you're done with working for my basic income. And it really helped us to like kind of separate this emotional level. And in holacracy that doesn't really have any room, but it is part of it for us. And now we've gotten a lot better at uh, kind of uh, mixing these subject matters without canceling each other out. Because a lot of times, like sometimes I just want to have a decision, like how are we gonna, how much is the ticket price gonna be for the future next year? And you have an emotional subject with me, for example, because we had a fight just before, and then you start like kind of blocking all of that, and all of that is coming together in one meeting. We can't agree upon anything, so we kind of do this like a lot of uh, GFK seminars to violence-free communication. And, uh, and then I can like listen to you guys, and it, I, I have this tension inside me, and it doesn't feel very great, and you can't really put it into words. And that also works for us then, because um, what doesn't feel great is really in relation to the subject that's at, at, at the, the decision at the moment. It's not about our emotional relationship. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much for listening.